Thanks for the Thank reminder. So like I said, I'm Steph Hankinson from South Seattle College, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I've got a little kind of PowerPoint presentation to show you all. And if there's any time in the presentation where you've got a question for me, you're not sure what I'm talking about, or you just want to sort of throw out something for me to address, feel free to put it in the chat. It should be over on the, the right side of your screen. Um, and that'll signal to me to, to answer some questions. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here. One second. Okay, so can I get a thumbs up if you all are seeing a screen that says humanities and culture, Steph Hankinson, South Seattle College. Is that happening? Cool. Thanks, B. That's what's up. All right, great. Wonderful. Um, let me open up uh, the chat just to make sure I don't miss that. Okay, so I've got the chat open here. So I'm just going to get going. Feel free to stop me at any time, like I mentioned, with questions uh, or anything you want me to address. So like I mentioned earlier, humanities is really this, this quest to expand our knowledge of human cultures, to help us understand what binds us together and what differentiates us from each other within a sort of global context. And typically what you have when you're studying the humanities is you'll take a wide range of courses that address the sort of systems of power that are inherent in our world and also the ways that human cultures both sort of keep those power systems in place, but then the ways that we work against the systems of power that we that we have in place culturally um, in different sort of areas of the world. So we study things like race, gender, class, nationality, language, sexual orientation, ability, right? All of these things related to identity, but we also often look at those questions of identity through the lens of popular culture, the media, looking at um, sort of different social movements. That's another way that we do investigations in the humanities. So you may have classes that are focused really on social justice and revolutions throughout history and across different um, sections of the world. And then we focus a lot on how stories are told. And I, you know, what really excites me about the study of the humanities is like, it's not just stories in the traditional sense of like picking up a novel or something and reading through um, a story that's been generated, but the various ways that stories are told. This could be through dance and movement. It could be through the practice of a religion. It could be through the way that we come together and protest the inequities that our communities are experiencing. Um, and these are all the different ways that cultures express and write their own stories. And so we're very interested in, in stories in the humanities. Um, We'll often study global cultures through the lens of politics and social histories as well. And so you're, you're always gonna get these various contexts that kind of shape the human experience when you're in humanities classes. And we look at social relationships, right? So what are the sort of maybe dynamics of a family, for example, or um, what are the ways that my race and my gender constructs the way that I operate in a workplace? Um, these are the kinds of questions that we might ask in a humanities class focused on broader topics. So I want to show you this quick video here. Um, and I think I can share, let me make sure I've got my sound on. But I'm going to go ahead and share this video. And this is just a quick sort of overview from um, some students that are that are in humanities majors at four-year institutions talking about what it means to actually study in the humanities. And so give me thumbs up when the video is playing, if you can actually hear the sound. I think you should be able to but let's try it out. The humanities are incredibly important for an understanding and therefore working with change makers in the world. I think the humanities provide us with a really important opportunity to understand what it is that we sort of live for and how we experience our lives. But one of the great gifts, I think, of studying the humanities is that although you're pursuing expertise, the thing in which you're pursuing expertise is something that has resonance for any human being with a heart and a mind and a soul. As we delve into our particular subjects, we're invited to not lose sight of the general sort of awe at what it means to be a human. It's important to understand the history and cultures and economics and so on of the past to make decisions that are based on fact and then based on a tactful and compassionate understanding of different societies in the world. The, the way we engage with the world and our, the emotions that we experience through the world are all things that I think the humanities can really uh, allow us to kind of understand, make sense of those experiences. It's vitally important for everyone sort of to understand him or herself better and to know what it is. 
person that really sets them on fire. You're able to think about how facts are presented to people, how those facts are told, and about how that kind of rhetoric shapes the world. And I think that's incredibly important politically and socially. I think a study of the humanities invites us to also question the systems we have created for ourselves as we look at history and as we look at the literature that um, makes our heartbeats faster and the art that encourages us to admire the planet around us i think we end up asking ourselves if the society as a whole that we've created is sufficient to support each one of us to interact with each other in a way that is based in justice that's based in beauty that's based in compassion and without the humanities um, we might forget what it means to be a human after all all right so that is just a sort of perspective from some students that are studying in the humanities and why it, it really lands in this is this sort of core attunement to what it means to be human and how we actually look at that. And so what you probably noticed in that video is a lot of the students and the materials we were looking at seem like they're coming from all these different disciplines. We were looking at students studying foreign languages. We were look at, looking at students that were looking at sort of feminist theory or thinking about gender and identity. And humanity students are often interdisciplinary students. We draw from all of these different sort of traditional academic disciplines and develop projects that reflect that broad range of interests. And so, for example, my own study was in disaster studies. And so I look at the ways that disaster cultures and the production of films that focus on disaster and plays and performance art that focus on disaster can tell us something about the racial and class-based inequities that are experienced in those spaces of disaster. And so I ended up sort of combining film studies, digital humanities, queer studies, history, and literature all for this pursuit of questions around the humanities. And I think that this is the sort of perfect way to encapsulate it here. Um, if you, you know, think to Jurassic Park, right? Science can tell you how to clone a T-Rex, but the humanities can tell you why it might be a bad idea to do so. And so this is sort of the, the kinds of projects um, that we might develop uh, from an interdisciplinary humanities perspective. And so the range of interest that you see here, right? Ethnic studies, film and television studies, gender and women's studies, law, history. These are all great starting places, especially if you're not sure exactly where you might track into these when you, when you transfer to potentially a four-year college to finish a degree. Humanity students that have training in the kinds of thinking and the kinds of writing and research that you study in one of our programs really prepares you for any of these sub-disciplines, right? Or any of these separate disciplines. And so it's a great starting place, especially if you're unsure of what direction you'll take um, with further academic study. So uh, I wanted to have a little Q&A time just to sort of get you all into this. So go ahead and uh, get ready to type in the chat. I'm gonna ask a couple of questions here. So first question, respond in the chat if you've ever enjoyed talking to your friends and family about a movie or TV show. Can you think of a TV show that you've shared conversations with, maybe critical thought, asked some questions, really made you think or that you responded to emotionally or psychologically, maybe movie, TV show, something like that. Anything in mind? I'll pop on to the next one, see if maybe this first some interest. So have you ever wanted to learn more about social justice or get involved with helping in your community? Is this something that's maybe sparked any of your interests? Maybe you have an example of a way. Oh, Squid Game. Yeah, who watched Squid Game? This is great, B, thank you. Squid Game is actually a really interesting example because this is like sort of not only a lens into the way that another culture produces um, an art form, right? This is this is actually taking on a, a different sort of perspective of um, from television, right? Just by being a sort of non-US dominant, non-English dominant uh, production. But it also allows us to ask questions about our own relationship to race, class, power, privilege, all of these things. I think that's why Squid Game was such a big phenomenon, not just in Korea, but across 
um, all of Southeast Asia, all of East Asia and all of the US, right? It was like the number one show on Netflix forever. Um, and it's because it's hitting on these sort of main tenets of what it means to be human, right? These, these challenges that we encounter, these different systems of power um, and inequity that, that we experience even across those sort of cultural lines, right? Um, so let me just ask a couple more questions. Yeah. Yeah, bureaucracy and housing difficulties of being a single mother, exactly. So I teach an intercultural communications class and the way we um, start this class is really thinking about these inequities um, that are baked into the systems of economics and the cultural legacies in the US um, around class, race, gender, all of this. And I'm seeing that sort of in this in the second comment, right? When we're thinking about bureaucracy, housing inequities, the challenges of being a single parent in the US, right? And the systems of power that are structured and in place, um, really even education itself. We ask a lot of questions about how education functions to, um, to sort of uphold these systems of power while simultaneously inviting us to find ways to dismantle those systems of power, right? To create more equity for uh, our communities. Let's see, we've got a note here about, I always talk a lot after watching any movie and I remember specifically talking about Hereditary a lot and watching it. So Hereditary, I, I remember seeing that when that was a horror movie, I think. And horror is actually a really interesting genre of film that a lot of humanities classes will use. Like I'm thinking of Heredity and I'm thinking of um, the other one that comes to mind is like something I commonly use in my classes are uh, the Jordan Peele movies, right? And so, uh, Get Out, right? We've got, um, we've got, oh, what was the new one that he just came out with, with Lupita Nyong'o? Anyway, I, I won't, I won't take too much time like sticking on this, but um, thinking about horror is actually a really interesting way to use a cultural product, something that's coming from popular culture and ask questions about race, class difference, inequity, right? And, and sort of use that to dismantle or challenge the power structures that, um, that we see. And that's why I think something like uh, Get Out or Hereditary and horror films generally are really interesting cultural products that can tell us a lot about the condition they were produced in, right? So who's getting to tell these stories? What are the ways that we think about race and gender, for example, was something like Get Out that we maybe hadn't thought about before, or maybe it is a, a situation we'd thought about before, a, a way of being in the world that we thought about before, but we're transformed by seeing that put onto the big screen for all of the audiences to consume and sort of consider, right? And that there's this sort of political undercurrent to films like this. So those are definitely films that you might be looking at. So I've also got questions here about, have you ever enjoyed connecting with your classmates and learning about aspects of your identity? I'm getting the sense that, yes, that's true. We've got Squid Game, Heredity, the, uh, the sort of circumstances of um, class and labor related to different workplaces. Have you ever wanted to learn more about climate change, global poverty, migration, public schools, gentrification? Which of these sounds most exciting to you? I'd love for you to just throw something in the chat that you're like, oh, I'm, I'm interested in, in studying migration or I'm interested in studying global cultures and activism. Did any of these land for you all? I'll give you a chance to pop something in the chat there. Or maybe something that's not listed that you're curious about that's sort of related to these fields. Yeah, totally. Me too. And global, the study of global cultures is so fascinating because even when we're going outside of what we're constantly encountering in our own lives, it allows us to, to sort of both understand social and cultural difference, but understand things about ourselves too. And so we've always got in the humanities, it seems like we're always situated with my own understanding, my own context of living in the world, how I see things, what my interactions and my histories are, and the ways that I can better understand the difference that other people come to the table with. And that's the beauty of being in a place like the Seattle Colleges and studying something like the humanities. Are Earth Day context, contents part of the humanities? Yeah, I think of like, you know, when we're thinking about sustainability, say, for example, or the way that we care for our planet, that's always a kind of human question in a way, right? Like we're not removed from uh, the environment, right? Or the ways that the world operates or even the study of natural systems, right? Humans are a piece of that and a place in this sort of global system. And to think about the human influences on our natural systems is totally in, in um, tandem with something like you might study in your 
environmental studies class or your ecology class. And so this is the beautiful thing about the humanities is we might be talking about Earth Day, for example. We might be you know, talking about uh, sustainability or recycling programs, but there's always these, always these undercurrents of power and privilege and um, systemic structures that underpin all of that, right? And so you sort of start to think in the way where you're like, looking at Earth Day, you're thinking about sustainability, celebrating the environment, protecting the environment, but you also have these larger human contexts that you're pairing with these knowledges. And so it sort of ends up being a toolkit to study any aspect of being alive and being human through this lens of the interdisciplinary humanities. So I just wanted to throw out a couple of projects like of recent projects that students have been working on. Let's see, B says, I like learning about economic systems and how they affect people differently, totally. This is 100% something that you would be looking at in a humanities class um, through a bunch of different lenses, right? Um, and it makes sense. I think you're the one that also mentioned, yeah, Squid Game up at the top, right? So thinking about economic systems, thinking about power, class, right? All of these things could become a project maybe based in Squid Game as your sort of main text or your article of study. So you could work on a project, right? This is just some recent projects um, that my students have been looking at, but the history of social activism, uh, looking at histories of collective action, visual storytelling culture. These are some uh, photographs that were used in a recent student project where they were looking at the way that photography structures the public understanding of social activism. Um, so I just wanted to show this. And then I had a student that was working uh, last quarter in one of my uh, sort of gender and television classes on the sort of history of LGBTQ film and television and looking at it through the lens of like drag cultures and history. So thinking about gender and performance theory and the study of fashion as expressing um, transgressive ideals or things that push the sort of edges and boundaries of how gender functions or how sexuality is presented or what we think about masculinity, for example. So this was just a recent project, a couple of images that a student used here. Some of you might um, have even watched some of these, right? I'm a big uh, Pose fan, Billy Porter's amazing, right? So like, this is the kind of project that gets structured by a student in a humanities class. And they're really exploring questions around gender and identity through the lens of something like drag television history. Um, I had a student that really wanted to work on uh, sort of, a, I think of this as a kind of environmental and uh, comics presentation, if that makes any sense. There's a lot of comics and a lot of uh, comic book history that's interested in this question of climate collapse and thinking about the sort of history, the future histories or possibilities of what it means to be on earth if and when climate collapse occurs. And so the study of comics and thinking about the environment was something the student really wanted to, to play with and this idea of cyborgs and humanity and where's the line between human and machine, for example. So if you're kind of inclined towards something like science fiction, the study of the limits of what makes you, what's the difference between human and machine, something like the humanities might be for you. These are the kinds of projects um, you can structure in these classes, right? So like I mentioned before, each college has uh, humanity courses on offer. We each have slightly different humanities and culture majors. Um, and there are typically no entry requirements to a humanities program or to a humanities class. So even if you're studying something else, say you're studying nursing or you're interested in biology, typically you can sign up for a humanities class without having to have any prerequisites met. It's a great place to start, especially if you're interested in these kinds of contexts and topics and questions, it's especially um, it's especially sort of wonderful to, to have something where your first quarter into the colleges, you've got something that you're at least on the face familiar with. You're like, great, I've watched a lot of film. I'm interested in television in this way. I'd like to explore these questions more deeply, or I'm interested in economies and jobs, et cetera. I'd like to explore these more deeply. Typically any humanities class is gonna have space for you to follow those lines of inquiry. So, Thinking about moving forward out of the humanities, most students that go through a humanities and culture pathway will end up transferring into a variety of programs. Like I mentioned, you might study humanities and culture at the colleges, and you might end up transferring into something like film and television studies, or you might end up transferring into something like education, right? There's a lot of people that decide, uh, you know, they're interested in the studies of humanity and they get 
the studies of the humanities and get focused on something like the power and systems of something like public education, right, or policy planning, uh, and go into something like geography or education for that uh, for that work. Uh, they could end up moving into philosophy or history, anthropology, gender and women's studies, because it's interdisciplinary and it's training. Like I mentioned, you get this real toolkit of perspectives and skills that then when you sort of narrow down what it is that you want to continue study in, you're very prepared for whatever direction you're going to take. So that's a sort of wonderful thing about um, humanities and culture at the two-year two -year college. Uh, and these programs, like this long list up here is not the end of it. Like there's a lot of other programs you might enroll in based on the college. Some have more specialized humanities programs. Like um, I believe SPU has a sort of social justice specific program, right? And, and often that's in or connected to like legal studies. So if you're interested in pursuing law, maybe, um, this is a way that people move forward. But these programs are at every every college and university you might transfer to, and humanities is a great base for um, for any of these. So, like I mentioned before, um, you know, it doesn't mean that there aren't a ton of jobs associated with this. And I have so many students that uh, go into careers along the way where they're studying, and they may already be in careers where their study of the humanities um, takes the form of of part of their like active jobs, right? And so there may be engaged in uh, social work in some way, or they have uh, they have a relationship to arts and cultural organizations or an interest in that. They're connected with social activist groups or community organizing groups. Um, and so often those careers are even started when students are actually still enrolled. And so there's a lot of opportunities for you to get involved with community organizations, educational organizations, nonprofits, arts and culture organizations that have a basis in and a need for students that are studying humanities and culture. Um, and then careers that people go into, there's a lot of different careers that this can take. That's, a, that's true of many humanities um, and social sciences majors, but education, arts and cultural organizations, human relations, right? Which is no surprise, social work, nonprofit leadership, the law, right? Becoming an attorney, communications, journalism. Any of these career paths are sort of open to someone that starts in the humanities, again, because of that toolkit, the way you're seeing the world, the skills you're able to apply to whatever area of specificity you end up pursuing. So yeah, that's all I've got for us in terms of like a presentation. I hope this spurred some thinking. It's a really broad field. There's so much to cover here. Um, and if you've got, does anyone have any like general questions I can answer or any questions about the humanities, why I studied it, the kind of classes being taught, anything and everything we can cover now. I've also listed my info here for you. You can email me later. I'm happy to chat anytime you all have questions about it. Um, yeah, I'll just hang out for a second here and we can see what questions pop up about the humanities, about classes, the colleges in general, happy to answer anything. And no pressure if there's no questions. I know this is a lot to digest too. So you all can just email me later as well if nothing's coming to mind right away. What would you say is the best part of studying the humanities? Ooh, that's a great question. I think for me, it always, anytime I'm teaching a class or I'm doing my own scholarship as a sort of interdisciplinary humanities scholar, my favorite part is that it feels like it always connects to my daily life. I feel like no matter what area of study I'm looking at, uh, that there's some connection to my day to day. And it gives me a real grounding for like how to connect with other people as well, if that makes sense. So like say that I'm studying, uh, you know, the questions about environmental sustainability and uh, I don't know, thinking about like fast fashion and like clothing cultures, right? So how do we purchase clothes? How do we buy clothes? What's the labor for clothing production look like? It's something that tends to spur conversation in my everyday life and makes me think about what materials am I wearing? How am I circulating my clothes so that um, when I'm not using it, maybe somebody else could? What are the ways that clothing becomes a signal of power or status? And 
what are the ways that clothing allows me to feel fully embodied as the way I want to present in terms of gender or um, my own kind of fashion sense as a part of my expression of identity. So like something like that um, might attach to like so many aspects of my daily life. And I love that sort of spinning out of thinking in the humanities that everything seems connected. So I got another question here. Do we study English uh, in the courses too? So that's a good question. Um, there are English requirements that come along with this. And so an English course, uh, when you get to the colleges, it's often around writing and having like producing knowledge and then uh, writing papers about it and having uh, different projects where you express your perspective or you tell your story through composition, through uh, the project of writing or making a PowerPoint or having a presentation and studying like spoken English. Um, is that, can I ask a follow-up question? Is it like, do you mean speaking English, writing in English? Yeah, the every thing in English. Uh-huh. Yeah, so most classes will uh, be conducted in English, but we also will be working with uh, media from all around the world. So like, I'm thinking of like the global film class that I teach. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Oh, yeah, because the name is English yeah. Humanities, <laughs> because I asked, because this I asked. Yeah, no, it's a good question. So, um, yeah, English and Humanities classes are often taught by professors that work in both, right? So I teach in English classes where we're looking at, like, actually the formal study of English, how we produce writing in English, presentations in English, things like this, um, the communication side of things. And then humanities uses uh, a broad range of uh, like pop culture materials. It's not all English based, like the global cinema class I teach, nothing, none of the course materials are, uh, none of the films we watch are in English in that class, right? And so we have a week that's on Romanian film and we look at Japanese cinema and we look at uh, films that are coming out of Mexico or films that are coming out of South America or indigenous cultures. And so humanities is kind of a broader thing. You might have works in translation. Um, so sometimes it's translated into English. Um, you're working across different things, but yeah, English specifically um, is kind of its own, uh, its own field, right? The study of, of producing and writing in English is, is usually a part of humanities, but not the only focus. Thank you. Sure, of course. Any other questions about this? I know it's a lot. This is like quite the intro. What's the difference uh, between humanities and philosophy? So philosophy is often um, a kind of uh, requirement that some humanities students will take. And so humanities often uses pieces of philosophy, right? And so for some of you, maybe you took a philosophy class or that's a, a sort of standard discipline that you see listed out on things. Um, and I'd say the main difference in humanities and philosophy is that philosophy is its own discipline, right? So to, to really study philosophy and, and find the ways of thinking towards like um, logical systems, like I'm thinking of like Socratic method and like the way that logic works and the way that we make arguments in order to solve problems in the world, uh, for example, that's a, there's a specific like disciplinary way that a philosopher would do that. And a person that studies humanities might use some philosophy to support their project, but they might also use some history or they might use some cultural studies or they might use some economics, right? And so it's a little more interdisciplinary and philosophy has kind of its own um, disciplinary skill set to it, if that makes sense. And so you kind of dip, you would dip into a little philosophy, but the main difference is, um, you know, I'm not a philosopher, so this is a little bit of a hard question, but the, the difference is in how we use perspectives from multiple disciplines within the humanities, right? It's all in service of this human cultures, power systems. Yeah. All right, thank you all. So I'm gonna pop us back into the uh, main room. We can hop back in there. And if you've got any questions, please email me. I'm happy to answer them. Um, and thank you all so much, appreciate you.